And could I again uh, thank the, the note takers and the facilitators who've done such a fantastic job uh, over the weekend. So we, ha we have a bit of time to continue the conversation about the, uh, the any other amendment. So is there anyone else would like to express a view? Charlie. Back into microphone mode, Mary. Great, thank you. <laughs> uh, no, Chairman, I, I, I would merely say that I think it's, it's very important that, that in our final report, which will, I think, be the eighth or ninth, that we would stress the fact to government that there is unfinished business uh, and that this convention was a success. Uh, and for my part, uh, I would have formed the view over the past 12 months, uh, and particularly in recent times, that there is a view uh, among the convention members that some form of convention uh, be, be continued. Uh, and I think if that is the view, I think it's important that we would say that. Mm. And I feel we should stress uh, unfinished business in very strong terms, uh, and that we would like to continue it. Mm. That's all. Okay, thank you. I mean, I, I, I'm not sure that it's up to the convention to adjudicate on whether we've been a success or not. Um, you know, I think that's actually for other people to make a judgment on. But, I mean, the issue of that, the reality that there is unfinished business, there's no disputation about that. Any other comments? Yeah, Tom again. Tommy, you were in before on this issue, were you? Yeah. Okay, so John, you weren't. Could we go to you first? We, I'll let you in, Tom, in, in due course, hopefully. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, yeah. I suppose uh, when you look back as to uh, what way the um, <coughs> Assembly has voted uh, in terms of um, the environment, um, that it would certainly be topping most uh, secondary lists. Um, we Irish love talking about the weather, and God bless us, all over the world now, they've taken up that part of our uh, <coughs> national identity. And I think it's with very good reason, because it doesn't appear as if we're coming forward with any constructive um, inputs into what could be a world tragedy. And um, I certainly feel that a, a convention such as this um, needs to be conducted on, on that sole point alone, that, that perhaps um, the top table would take it into account to put it to the government that it is not alone a national issue, but it is a world issue, and that it definitely needs to be addressed in detail by some authoritative uh, uh, assembly. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, did I see a call over here? Oh, Martina, sorry. Good. Uh, Martina O'Connell. Um, I must say this has been a very worthwhile experience for me uh, taking part in this, and I'm sure a lot of the citizens would agree, but my concern is um, in relation to the actual Constitution. And a lot of the topics that we have discussed over this weekend, I'm not sure of their particular constitutional relevance. And I'm just wondering how we would be perceived outside, um, you know, by the general public as to what we're discussing and its relevance to the Constitution. So I'm just wondering, for the next meeting, could we possibly narrow down our remit a little bit and just make it more constitutional? constitutionally relevant, if that makes sense, I'm not sure. Yeah, it, it does, Martina, yeah, and in fact, I think the, the situation for the next week will be a, a very net uh, situation in that uh, the matter before us will be whether or not to include or not include so issues like economic, social and cultural rights in the Constitution, okay. because that would be certainly a material change from the current situation. So yeah. Thank you. Yvonne, did you want to speak? Um, a citizen. I would just like I would like the environment to be discussed and to get behind all the people that are fighting these windmills. There is one group of them going into the centre of Ireland and the electricity is going to England. And I would love to know who's behind it that's coming in from Rush and going right across the country where I think it should be discussed at the convention. And if there is a, a, 
a large number of people against it, they should, the fact that it's coming from the convention, it should uh, give heart to the ones that are disagreeing with it. Okay. Well, okay, but I mean, uh, I don't think the convention can be uh, some kind of an extension of different political interests or interest groups. Uh, ultimately, it has to relate back to the to the constitution. And uh, I mean, there is a, a quite real issue which was raised by the environmental groups as to whether there should be something in the constitution which would relate to the environment. And that would that would might be the way you connect back to the issue you're talking about, Yvonne. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Uh, again, Sheila, please. Um, just in relation to the actual structure or the model of this convention, um, it seems to be a very successful model of the way it operates and how it gets results. And it has a beginning, middle and end to it. And I would like to congratulate the Secretary in relation to that. But in terms of future conventions and future uses for it, um, I would like to concur with what Ivana said in that it should, whatever business is conducted, it should be used as a model for something that's relevant and timely in the future of that time. Because you wouldn't like to think that it just became another semi-institution. Okay. Thank, Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Good. Yeah. yeah. All right. Just on that particular point, Sheila, I, I think it's very valuable and I think it's very obvious that during the course of the year, we learned an awful lot from each meeting. So we learned something new at a meeting, we try to implement changes to following one, etc. So um, I would be very interested between now and the next meeting if people would let me know um, what they felt worked well and more importantly, what they feel should be different about a new convention. I mean, there are, if there are gaps and issues that you think should be changed for a new model, I'd be very interested in hearing it. And we'll gather up all of the suggested changes and maybe we'll have a conversation about that as well, about, uh, about the future, because um, uh, there's no point in having 170 people in the room right now unless we learn from each other in relation to what it is that you, uh, you feel works or not. Yeah, I think that's a very valuable uh, comment. And, and so I think because, you know, not everybody is going to either have the inclination or we don't have the time to stand up here in the next 20 minutes at, with ideas on, on that. But there will, a number of people might want, wish to communicate directly with the Secretariat on, 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 that, on precisely what Art has said. Tom, uh, given that... <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Uh, Tom Burke. On the issue of future conventions, we've had 30 amendments to the Constitution already. There are another three promised as a result of the work of this convention, possibly more to follow. Uh, the turnout of the last three um, uh, referenda have, has been absolutely diabolical. Possibly the first subject we should be looking at in a future convention is whether or not we need to to throw out the existing constitution and come in with one that, and true Democrats might not like this, but that doesn't require uh, a referendum for every constitutional change. Uh, there is the other democratic way, let politicians put their neck on the block, let them vote and take the consequences one way or the other in the next election. But I think it's, it's a subject that could maybe last for two weekends rather than one, should we get rid of the existing constitution and replace it with something more concise? Thank you. Okay. I mean, obviously that is a point of view that some people had, but, um, so ter Terry, please. Ter yeah. Hello, Terry Cormick in, uh, uh, citizen member. Um, my comment is just regarding the referenda that uh, the last few referenda, there has been extraneous circumstances that I think caused the referenda um, turnout to be low, such as the content of the paper. The, uh, sorry, not the content, but the way perhaps the paper was worded um, uh, made people um, a little hesitant perhaps to turn out. Um, I think that the 
multiple referendums, perhaps on a single day in a year, that, uh, and a day that's picked of a weekend so that students and others can attend, is a good thing and it shouldn't be overlooked. That's point one. On a totally different point, um, I, just in relation to a comment that Tom made earlier, um, in that should some of the issues take two or three weekends, uh, be extended out, I would be a little hesitant speaking for myself only, but I'm sure there's others in this room of a similar vein, that Yes, I did some preparation for this weekend, but with the Friday night um, um, uh, training and everything, I feel capable of making uh, realistic decisions this weekend. Um, but going at something in more depth, I'm not sure I would be willing or capable to, of do. I think I would rather leave that to the experts in government and local office to handle those nuts and bolts details. I think it's nice to just be the manager of the reform or whatever we're looking for and leave the nuts and bolts to the experts. Thank you. Yeah, yeah well, I mean, that's, that's a lot of legitimacy there because clearly when you get down to teasing out the, even the implications of some of the recommendations we've made, and try to put legal texts on them, et cetera, et cetera, or even find the wording to, for a referendum uh, which would reflect a wish expressed by this convention, you're into complexity and, and difficulty. So there are limits to what a, a convention can do. Uh, okay. Any other comments? Because the voting is going to take, uh, is still in train, but the results are not going to be available for, for a while. I mean, if that's the case, if there are no further comments, we could suspend the convention for, uh, I don't know, to a quarter past one. People could have lunch. People could have lunch. And, and, well, they'll hardly have lunch over by a quarter past one, I think, will they? Uh, half an hour. But we, if we're, we will have the voting, the, the results at a, at a quarter past one. So <laughs> you're free until a quarter past one. Or 20 minutes. 20 minutes, OK. Uh, so maybe one o'clock, essentially. Yeah. We, we, one o'clock. So we free till one o'clock and we resume for the conclusion. Thank you. Thank you.